on strengthening energy resilience by looking below ground. A nationwide study to be conducted to assess geothermal energy as a potential power source. And for more on this subject, we're joined by Professor Alessandro Manoli. He's a cluster director of Balti Energy Systems and Grids at the Energy Research Institute at NTU. Professor, uh, EMA calling for a non-invasive geophysical study. Uh, what would a non-invasive study involve? Yeah, no, um, good question. So uh, a geophysical uh, survey, in fact, entails uh, the deployment of what we call non-invasive invasive, uh, surveying techniques. And, um, and these basically are techniques utilized to gain a comprehensive understanding of uh, Singapore's subsurface rock condition with a minimum physical disturbance. In fact, the data uh, acquisition occurs at ground surface and in fact, also when it comes to data acquisition, it's not uncommon that some of the measurements are being carried out during nighttime to minimize uh, disruption to local communities. So once this data has been uh, uh, collected, uh, the data will go some level of uh, post-processing with the focus of uh, identifying subsurface uh, features uh, such as, for instance, faults, because faults uh, uh, could potentially act as a natural conduit for uh, fluid uh, to circulate, uh, to facilitate fluid circulation from the deep subsurface reservoirs to the ground surface, which could, be, could contribute to move the heat from underground all the way to uh, above ground. Professor Romagnoli, so key to all of this is, is collecting that data and, and then analyzing the quality of that data. We know that there have been previous studies that have indicated the geothermal potential in the northern and eastern parts of Singapore. Do we know how much there is or are we still determining that so that we can understand whether it will be able to meet Singapore's energy demands? Now, thanks for the question. I believe that it's a million dollar question. And unfortunately, we have no answer to this question yet. And the reason is, is that uh, at the moment, the sort of geometrical extent of the potential hot rock in Singapore is unknown. So basically what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say that the amount of geothermal heat that we could potentially extract depends on the volume of the hot rock that we can find underground. And at the moment, this information is not available. So really what we should be trying to do here, uh, together with this study on geophysical survey, we should answer three main questions. Uh, where is this uh, geothermal heat and what that and what is the extent and the amount of the heat available that could be utilized for power production or other application? I mean, this is the focus. This is what we are working on. But at the present, there is no uh, fixed or hard number that, you know, that could be shared uh, that can be uh, for estimates. Professor Romagnoli, uh, in a way, uh, amount in itself does not determine whether this is a, is a solid potential for Singapore. In a way, if we have the technology, even with a little, in principle, we can scale it up and make a greater use of what little that we can find. But does Singapore have the technology we need to capitalize on geothermal, even whatever the level we can discover within this country? Yeah, I guess one of, one of the concerns when it comes to geothermal is about uh, about Singapore, sorry, is about uh, land constraint space. So there is a lack of space, and that is what is a concern for Singapore. So, I mean, interestingly enough, geothermal uh, is, um, uh, is a compact form of renewable energy. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to compare, for instance, the footprint of a geothermal power plant versus a more conventional power plant or even against a solar PV farm with similar generation capacity, a geothermal power plant will be likely five to eight times uh, smaller in terms of footprint uh, as compared to the others. Um, the reason is, is that the bulk of the infrastructure, in fact, sits underground. And for what it concerns the heat utilization on ground, above ground, uh, the footprint is small. And also for what it concerns the technology, I mean, the technology for heat utilization is commercially available. The question here is to understand, is there enough heat that Singapore could exploit at scale, at capacity, to serve the uh, energy demand of the country. 
Professor Romagnoli, if it were to be discovered that we did have sufficient geothermal energy, let's just say, let's hypothetically say that we did, how would it stack up to the other alternatives that we're also looking at developing, like solar and hydrogen? No, indeed. I mean, um, so I don't see a conflict between geothermal, solar or hydrogen. In fact, geothermal is a versatile form of renewable energy that could be utilized for power production, for electricity, basically, but also to produce cooling. Uh, could also be used for uh, water desalination or for other, other heating, uh, industrial heating applications. So, I mean, it's a form of uh, renewables that is uh, versatile, is constant, and in fact, is not affected by uh, weather conditions like uh, solar. And also, it comes with a long life cycle. In fact, uh, the geothermal power plants could last for decades. So, I see no conflict but rather an opportunity for Singapore to enhance its energy mix and not be limiting the energy supply just to few energy carriers or few energy resources. So for what you concern hydrogen, again, there is no conflict here, but as we know, hydrogen comes with some other challenges which are mainly due with the scale and capacity of uh, hydrogen production and also with the supply chain. So overall, I would say good for the government. I'm glad to see that the government is looking to geothermal and I hope, you know, that this uh, geophysical survey will give us a better understanding of the extent of the geothermal heat for Singapore. And I'm glad to see that there is a momentum and traction uh, on this topic in Singapore. Oh, thanks for joining us this evening, Professor Alessandro Romanoli at NTU's Energy Research Institute.